Yeah, 100%. And then the last thing I'll ask you then, uh, of course, the million dollar question, obviously new contracts. What What is going on in terms of new contracts? Of course, I think Trent has, uh, has said that he doesn't want nothing being spoken about publicly um, about, of course, his current situation. Obviously, I think Ian Doyle uh, reported that it looks like Mo Salah will leave the football club um, next summer. Is there any news regarding contracts or is it all shush for now and then we'll have a look after the transfer window yeah I, I just think there's a there's an awful lot up in the air at the minute i know people always want cast iron answers and guarantees but i, I don't think I, I honestly don't think i could predict with any you know surety what happens with all all three of those i think um I, I certainly wouldn't say that Salah is nailed on to go at the end of the season. That's that's certainly not my understanding. I think I, I think they're all different and they're all interesting. And that's why we've kind of run a series of articles about them on the Athletic this week. And we did we did Salah on Wednesday, uh, Van Dijk today, and then I've written a piece on Trent that's being published in the morning, and um, just trying to set out what the situation is and kind of how it's reached this point and how the landscape looks because um i think with salary it's really interesting the fact that there's been no hint of any agitation or unrest on his front or with his agent you know when you think back to a few years ago when he was approaching his last year it was very different and i think that just shows he's completely relaxed about this because yeah. i think he knows that it probably suits him to just see what happens that you know if he has a brilliant season, I'd be really surprised if Salah is prepared to kind of just wave goodbye to elite football and go to play in Saudi Arabia. Because you know, what? Why would you? When you know, you've when you when you've got the kind of the you still at the peak of your powers, like it's yeah, been weird yeah. to go. I just think, I, I to me, I think he's got three years left minimum at the top level, and he's such an intelligent footballer that he's not someone who just relies solely on their pace and and leads his life so well and looks after his body incredibly that that i i still retain hope that he will stay around for longer but it but again it goes back to what i said before about with edwards coming back it's that emotion out of the decision making process and it's what mo salah won't get a new contract as recognition of what he's done for liverpool and what a legend he is if he gets a new contract on terms that are acceptable to him, it will be because Edwards and Hughes firmly believe that he will continue performing at the very highest level till he's like 35, 36. And I think that's the bit that's the difficulty, isn't it? I mean, if you yeah. it's a different situation, but go back to say Genie Wenaldum. Now there was a big outcry when Wenaldum's contract was running down in terms of this guy's been so selfless and such an amazing team player in terms of everything Liverpool had achieved you've got to give him what you want and and I must admit like I, I thought it was a real gamble letting when Alden run his well, contract the way they did but mm -hmm. he, he didn't really do anything did he after he after he left Liverpool and and you'd almost say well that that you know and I'm, I'm sure data played a big part in that and mm -hmm. it was like well that was probably the right call um so I think I think with Salah it's very much a wait and see, and similar with Van Dijk in a way. I think out of the three, I'm probably the most confident that Van Dijk will stay, just because I think he really wants to stay. He loves being Liverpool captain. I think you know he's just been named in the PFA Team of the Year for the fourth time. Yeah. Yes, he's 33, but you know, to me, giving him another two years minimum, I, I, I just I, I know it's a it, people some people will say it's a gamble because then you're paying him you know big big money and it is complicated by the fact obviously Salah and Van Dijk two highest earners so and for a club like Liverpool whether people want to hear it or not when you commit vast sums of money to, to wages like that over an extended period that then has a knock-on effect in terms of what money can be spent elsewhere mm. and plus we've also seen it in terms of Jordan Henderson where giving someone a new contract that you should have maybe sold it, it, it's probably you know it didn't work out the best in that aspect where you, Liverpool yeah. should have probably sold Jordan Henderson or allowed him to run out his contract and then we saw then the after effects in that season where you know he was getting basically replaced by a Stefan Bicetic for example 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is so it is a real difficult one. I mean, Trent Trent is obviously the probably the the biggest talking point because I think people kind of get the logic of when someone's 32 or 33 not being in a rush to to make yeah. decisions and and to like just see how things go and and obviously when a player gets to 32 or 33 you're not talking about you know you know a massively valuable asset although obviously you know Salah still retains you know a, a, a decent decent value but um Trent is different because of course he's 25 just entering his peak years um and it's kind of hard to get your head around how that has got to this point because and I think part of it is just all the upheaval behind the scenes at the club in the last year year to 18 months with when you think with you know with Julian Ward leaving York Schmadka coming in as an interim sporting director who, he, he wasn't really doing everything a sporting director would have done because he was more just a facilitator of ins and outs of transfer deals and um and then obviously once Klopp decided he was going you know, I think everything was put on hold because it's like, well, people are going to want to see who's the new manager, who's in their plans, who does he fancy, who does he not fancy, you know, what's the, you know, so you, you want to see kind of what, what direction the club are going in. And then suddenly you reach this summer where these players are reaching their last year. Um, so I do have a lot of sympathy for Richard Hughes because I think, again, I see, I see people saying, well, how has he not sorted this? But that, that, these are very, like, especially with Trent, you know, it's a... It's a complicated it's a, situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got... Because because also, because Liverpool have left it so late, like, you know, he will now be getting offers kind of around, kind of like, well, if you were a free... Playing on Madrid and then playing with Kylian Mbappe and, and so on. So, so, yeah, and I just think... So that would make anyone think wouldn't it in terms of right yeah. well i need to, to wait and, and i should say that both the you know there's been as you said earlier trent hasn't wanted to discuss it you know out of respect to liverpool he wants it all to be conducted very very privately which i think is admirable because sometimes these things can get played out in the public domain and it becomes a bit of a game in terms of the use of the media and you know it can become a bit of a pr battle and i'm glad it's not reached that point yet um, and I hope it doesn't doesn't reach that point because I, I really hope Liverpool make him the kind of offer that he can't say no to in the same way as you know they they kind of pushed the boat out for Mo back in the 2022 to ensure that he stayed put. I think you've got to do the same for Trent because Trent. it would just be a massive massive blow to to lose him. Um, mm. yeah, yeah. I, on all kinds of levels because you know you're talking about a hundred million yeah, player. <laughs> asset. Yeah, yeah, someone. Mm who's so important you know you've got the com his commercial value to the club as well as huge um and, and the fact that he's 25 you know the best homegrown talent since Gerard you know the mm -hmm. the idea that you could lose him for nothing next summer you know that for me that just has to be avoided at all costs yeah, hundred percent. I think obviously, like you mentioned, in terms of commercial rights, of course, the proposal Adidas deal next season, considering Trent is the face of Adidas, again, that would be a huge blow for Liverpool to to let that down um, as yeah. well. But but um, we can end it there, guys. Uh, anyway.